big sisters and brothers. Jesus spoke about wine and how it's grown. This was contextual theology while there were plenty of vineyards in the places where Jesus was living. The listeners understood what he was speaking about. It's the same as here in California, plenty of vineyards and plenty of good wives. In Finland, we know something about vineyards if we have traveled in wine areas. However, uh, if Jesus had been living and teaching in Finland, it would have been better to speak about apple trees. <laughs> how they grow and how they bear fruit and what a gardener is supposed to do for the branches and at what time of the year. There are many branches uh, in a vine. The overwhelming emphasis in the Gospel text is fruitfulness. The words bear fruit appears six times in these eight verses. Fruit bearing is something that the branches do, 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 do that, 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 that the branches can't do by force, by or will. The fruit happens to organism because the wine is true and the garden is good. But the branches of this passage, they do choose to abide. It is difficult to think about this gospel text in an individual manner. What kind of branch I have? Am I good enough or should the gardener, God, cut me out? What kind of fruit I'm called to bear? What should I do and what not to do? However, we can think about this text also in a broader context. Jesus told this parable 2,000 years ago. There were several people around and they had to consider what kind of branches they are. After that, millions or even billions of people have considered what kind of branches they are. <coughs> Do they bear fruit? People have not considered this question in an empty space but from the perspective of their own church or religious community. The churches have given instructions or criteria on what kind of fruit are we called to bear. Are we called to bear the fruit of Christian character, Christian conduct or Christian converts? In a way we can think that uh, Churches are branches of the vine. As is the case with the product of the vine, wine, there are different kinds of wines. Red, white, rosé, sweet, dry, old, young. Some are regarded as better than the others. Some are regarded as awful and should not even be called the wine. Some people think that the only proper wine is red wine and the older the better. Some disagree. The history of the church is sometimes illustrated as uh, a tree with numerous smaller and bigger branches. In the beginning, they were just teachings of Jesus in that context where he lived. The first divisions, however, became quite early. Already Paul and Peter had different opinions, especially on the issue to what extent the Christians were supposed to follow the Jewish law. During the first centuries, 
of Christianity, there were numerous disagreements on the true Christian teaching. The Apostolic Creed was needed to define the mainline Christianity in an environment where various interpretations of Jesus' teachings were dividing Christians. There were struggles about the human and divine nature of Jesus, about Trinity, and about many other issues. Some branches of the church were cut out, and the apostolic creed was criteria for that. Whether this was also in accordance with the will of the gardener, God, is another issue. The most detailed Nicene Creed gave more detailed criteria for mainline Christianity. In early second millennium, the tree was divided into two big parts, Eastern and Western Christianity. The formal theological reason for that was the debate on the origin of the Holy Spirit. Whether Holy Spirit comes only from Father or from Father and Son. The big branches started to grow in different parts of the tree. Then the western tree was divided into several parts. As a consequence of the Reformation more than 500 years ago, western Christianity started to split. Catholics, Lutherans, Reformed, Anglicans, Baptists, etc. One of the basis for further divisions was Luther's excellent idea to translate the Bible into each one's own language and the idea of common reason. Anybody who would read would read the Bible and to some extent also interpret it by him or herself. The gardener started to have plenty of work with increasing number of branches. When just to think about the churches, the tree or the vine has huge number of branches. And when we think about individual Christians, the tree or the vine has billions of branches. Last week I was in Ghana. In the global gathering of the Global Christian Forum. This is an ecumenical network which gathers together the representatives of almost all churches. There were those who are members of the member churches of World Council of Churches, Orthodox, Lutherans, Anglicans, etc., representing 700 million Christians. There were representatives of many kinds of uh, Pentecostals, representing half a billion of Christians. There were Evangelicals, also representing half a billion Christians. And also the Roman Catholic Church, representing 1.3 billion Christians. If you try to mix the wine from this wine, it will really be a mixture. All branches of Orthodoxy and Catholics, quite old ones from Lutherans and Anglicans, and new and ever-growing branches of Pentecostals and Evangelicals. Which branches bear fruit? Which fruit? Which fruits bring the best wine? In Ghana, it was possible to discuss about the fruits and wines, about different types of Christianity. It was not a theological discussion in which we tried to explain our doctrinal views and then compare the fruits. On the contrary, it was faith stories. 
what God or Jesus means for me. What has been my spiritual journey? It was interesting and inspiring to hear about these same stories from the representatives of different churches and different cultures. All stories were unique and they all were genuine. They were true stories for those telling about their own spiritual life. The gardener, God, must be very busy with so many branches. But he must also be happy having so many kinds of fruit. The Global Christian Forum was celebrating its 25th anniversary. Festivities started uh, with a Pentecostal service in a mega church. <laughs> Wonderful premises, excellent choir, the pastor who had the title of Archbishop inspired the congregation to praise. Honestly speaking, that was not my cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> the level of decibels was about 100 measured by one whole participant. And the way the Archbishop carried out the service was quite odd for me. He was dressed more like Elton John than a pastor. And he was shouting so loud that I sometimes tried to find the way to escape. <laughs> when we were encouraged to raise our hands and praise the Lord, I did it, you know, Lutheran Pentecostal <laughs> And the music, it was American praise music, and I would like to have an African one while being in Africa. However, this branch bears fruit, even though I don't like that fruit. This Pentecostal mega church is growing rapidly as do thousands of other Pentecostal and Evangelical churches in the global south. In fact, two-thirds of Christians live now in the global south. Christianity is growing rapidly, even though our own wine heart might look different. We are called to bear fruit, good fruit like kindness and generosity. Most of all, we are called to love others as Jesus has loved us. And love also those Christians who seem to be different kinds of branches in the life bearing other kinds of we bear fruit, not by squeezing it out of ourselves, but because we are extensions of the vine, taken care by the gardener, God, who wants us to be fruitful and to be drawn into the unity of Father and Son, and to the unity of other Christians. God's love and presence are gifts. If we want to bear Jesus' fruit, then we choose to abide in him, abide in his love. Amen. Amen.